Hello, welcome to Karen Clark Gallery in Eugene, Oregon, where I'm thrilled to be here today with Naime Naimai, uh, who I've long admired as an artist. She's really an international artist, and I'm so thrilled to be hosting her uh, at my gallery in Eugene. And my name is Karen Clark, and I'm the owner of the gallery. And I saw Naime's work for the first time at the Jordan Schnitzer Museum in 2019, where she had her wonderful paintings. It was one of the most popular shows in the, in the history of that museum. Oh, yeah. Dream, yeah. It was <laughs> Dreams Before Extinction. And it just really moved me. And I remember I, I hadn't met her, I'd heard about her, and we went out for coffee. And I, was, I said, you know, someday, I know you're mostly showing in museums, but I go, someday if it ever worked out, I would love to have your work at my gallery and so I'm lucky I did that because it has resulted in this wonderful show we are oh, having. Um, it's, it's called John, which, which she'll explain in a minute. And the exhibit is up through June 24th. This is 2023. Yes. <laughs> this video gets seen in the future, which I think it will. Um, if I don't mess it up. <laughs> anyway, um, so welcome. I'm thrilled to be uh, getting a chance to show this work. We're going to be having a conversation about um, these two different directions that really do tie together um, in her work. Um, first, we're going to start with the photo series that was exhibited at the Schneider Museum in 2022. That's in Ashland, Oregon. And this series is called John. And First of all, I would love to hear you explain what that name means um, and about your idea for this series. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, it's really a pleasure for me to show my works in Eugene, Oregon, and also in Karen Clark Gallery. About John, John is a Persian word which means life, which means soul, and also uh, means dearest so when we want to call somebody which is very close to us we add john to the end of their names oh. like Karen john for example oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it it brings kind of life but also kind of intimacy yes and also you know loving and all of this just in that word so uh, Let's start about the project and how mm -hmm. it started. Uh, it was, what was the year? Maybe 2019, I guess, or 2018. Um, we went to a, a kind of a residency uh, in Willamette National Forest. Uh, it was a kind of collaboration between Oregon State University and also there was an organization which was called, I think, it was Spring Creek Project. If I'm not mistaken, and uh, in that time I, I had applied for uh, environmental arts program at Oregon State University. So they took a group of us to this kind of beautiful kind of um, area, which was a kind of kind of natural habitat in the middle of part of mm -hmm. Willamette National Forest. And uh, during the time that we were there, we were spent there like it was like I think about seven uh, days. Uh, we were trying to define a project. Uh, what I did, I, I had my camera with me, and the only thing that I had from like my past, in addition to everything in my mind, was my red scarf. And I usually, I mean, earlier when I was somewhere in natural world, I tried to kind of. Uh, pose in some way and then take some pictures about like some part of my body or posing somewhere in nature and this time it was only me and nobody else so uh, I thought I want to do something something that showed this kind of interaction and kind of um, this intimacy with nature and so I start using my scarf to represent kind of my body and then I felt like after like placing it in some kind of a creek, there was a beautiful creek there, a beautiful forest. After starting to work with scarf and capturing this kind of interaction, I felt, oh, this is much more better than my body actually. So, uh, so I 
the first idea came to my mind like this. And after I came back, um, I started to like think more about the photos that I had taken and I even prepared something, a kind of pictorial report and sent it to a fr my friend, a Paul Simonin, which is also kind of, he has been a great mentor for me all these years. And he saw it and he said, it's going to be a fantastic kind of book project. So after a moment, I started capturing more and more like um, photos for this series. And during the five years that I lived in Oregon, uh, I made a kind of whole series uh, of this kind of journey from uh, my presence in Oregon, natural kind of environment. I love it. Let's sort of pan down uh, because I want this this video to also serve as a document mm -hmm. of this incredible exhibit because you have a following that far beyond this area. Not everyone will be able to see it. So let's let's move along. Um, where was the location of this one we're looking at now? Uh, this one was was one of the uh, first kind of trails that I went with my friends, Paul and Anuncia. Uh, it was after my, um, that kind of uh, residency, so I don't know the name of the trail. It was like we were driving and all of a sudden we parked the car and we went to the forest. Mm -hmm. I think they knew where it was, but to me it was all kind of unknown, natural kind of areas. So uh, while we were walking on the trail, I felt like, okay, I had everything and I was asking, can you give me a moment? And then I found something and I went to like capture that kind of moment with, and I, it was really something that was not planned before. I love that. You know, um, in whole series, in all pictures, it's, I, I've never been able to repeat anything. It's all kind of uh, very momentary mm -hmm. uh, decision yes. about how can I like uh, interact in that moment? How can I have this conversation mm -hmm. with nature, with any kind of all elements in nature? So it can be a tree, sometimes it's ocean, it's, it can be kind of part of a lake. So different, different elements. Can like I I can have different kind of type of dialogues with them. Kind of this kind of burnt huge kind of tree, and all of a sudden I felt like oh this has this kind of human shape, and I just covered myself in that kind of scarf. And I didn't mention this, but the reason that I'm like keep using that scarf, the the also and the second idea that this is with me or it represents me is that. I had this kind of red traditional outfit in my uh, painting series in Mina and Leopard, and the, this kind of red scarf was part of that outfit. So, mm -hmm. and it was the only part that I brought uh, to the U.S. with myself. So, this is a kind of connection between me and my earlier kind of uh, yes, my past. Yeah, yeah, you're moving from the painting. Um, to the photo series, and then we'll get to the arterial series. Yeah, exactly. Which has so can see this transition between how the, uh, the kind of, um, how my outfit in the painting series gets to a kind of only the scarf, and then from the scarf it goes, becomes like a blood or just red little arterials in uh, arterials series. Um, this one might be a great one to look out um, for my next question, which you were just touching on um, but your idea of also the red, you know, representing blood and representing life and this idea of healing the earth, you know, healing, um, you know, healing nature and you're, you're, you know, you're so passionate about the environment and so sensitive. Um, this is the important thing about artists, their sensitivity to what's happening in our world and that's been a big part of your voice as an artist and um, you know looking at these this one you can really feel that the idea of uh, anyway just like you to touch on that idea of kind of healing nature you know your are you know, there's this gentle presence in nature but as a healing um, 
is something that you can do to heal or something? Um, it's a very good question, actually. Uh, I try to be kind of imitator between nature and human world in all my words, kind of. Uh, but uh, I try. I, I'm pretending to be a healer because the the impact of human destruction on the kind of natural environment is so enormous that. Uh, I don't feel that if I go and write a poetry or I do a kind of performance, it, I don't feel that it's going to like uh, heal nature in a kind of realistic uh, way. But it is more, is it healing myself? I mean, yeah. the question is, am I healing the nature or is I feel like I can heal myself through this practice? And I feel like the second is maybe this is the uh, reality behind the kind of project. So I try to pretend that, I, I mean, I'm, I like to be a healer. So I'm pretending I want to play the role of a healer. And this is kind of, this is what I do. So it's more expression of my emotion rather than changing or uh, something in the real world. But we are all are human and we can make changes through like, what we're doing and what we speak about or what we create as an mm -hmm. as artist. So uh, in this work, in, I, I use, and you would see it more in other works too, uh, I'm like an artery, I'm like a vein, or it's just these two huge uh, dead kind of trunks which are cut in a half. And, and I pretend to be that kind of central a vein that is connecting and bringing all pieces together to keep the kind of, um, to um, keep all pieces of that kind of dead body together. Yeah. So, uh, and I just repeat doing this in different kind of occasion with different elements. Um, let's go and talk. Yeah, let's move to this one. Um, of course, when I'm listening to people looking at the show, they always delight in discovering the foot <laughs> in this piece. So I believe this is the one piece in the series that actually has yes. your, you know, part of your body peeking yeah. out. <laughs> which, which yes, is that's, that's true. This is the only picture in the whole series, even in unshown pieces, that has part of my body. A kind of that can be observed. Uh, we went to this kind of trail and I saw this huge uh, tree which was uprooted and uh, I felt like oh this is uprooted and I can be also kind of uprooted <laughs> at that moment so I felt like this kind of similarity this kind of sympathy with trees so um, and I felt also oh why is this tree up with it? Is this kind of um, climate change, human impact? What is the kind of cause behind this? Because it was not only one, and I wasn't sure if it was part of kind of natural kind of um, process that happens in a forest. Uh, and I still don't know about it, but um, I tried to just find something. I jumped into, into the tree, <laughs> I found a hole, and then I posed kind of uprooted. And I really wanted to become one with that tree. And this is, again, something that I try to do in, I try to find kind of, uh, I'm seeking intimacy with nature. And this intimacy can be kind of through very different form. It can be like uh, created a different kind of, uh, performance or in different uh, forms. So in, one, in some uh, pieces, I may kind of go and get kind of physical attachment with like trees or ocean or stone or all pieces, or I might do something else to just show that kind of intimacy. I love that you said um, that you felt uprooted because when I look at this I do think of your foot as sort of one of the, you know, this is such, there's so many roots coming out mm. and that your tree is, your, your foot is just a, another root. Yeah, and that's I, right. I love that you said that you, you were uprooted. Yeah. Uh, there's another aspect I wanted to ask about your work, but maybe we'll move on to this one. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've gotten a lot of questions about it on the label 
because it mentions that it's not just photography, it's on canvas, but it actually incorporates some ash from the Willamette Valley Forest. Mm -hmm. So explain, if you could, how that came about and um, maybe your technique on applying it. Because I've, I've had some photographers come in here and their mind is just blown like, wait, what is she doing? But the mm -hmm. fact that you are not just a photographer, you're a painter, you're a sculptor, and you can feel that in this whole exhibit. And so you've used more of a painter's technique with this, but it's, it's really an interesting, uh, I think it's a really interesting symbol of the, of the ash. Thank you. Um, uh, I prepared these kind of pieces uh, for the show in Schneider Museum of Art in uh, Ashton. So um, I had worked on the photos for like five years, and this was the time that I had to print them out and see how I gonna like present them in the show. So uh, I made this kind of huge prints. I, I, uh, I printed them on canvas, but not to just represent them like, not just to present them like painting. And I didn't want to actually show that this, these are like photos printed on canvas because they're not painting. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I wanted to avoid having kind of glass on them and then I didn't like this kind of printing on aluminum or, uh, and I like the kind of texture of like fabric mm. to work with. So uh, I printed them on canvas and a kind of very smooth kind of archival mm. canvas so it doesn't show any kind of texture. Mm. Uh, the kind of, I feel like also the fabric can have more, um, it's, I can like uh, have a better uh, presentation between, there are kind of a uh, relation between uh, fabric and also the uh, scarf that I'm using in this series. So these were the reason behind choosing fa uh, kind of canvas. But after I print them out, I felt like it lacks something. I want something from the uh, real world, from my living experience attached to them. So. I felt like I was thinking, I kept thinking, what can I use to make them more, have something from real world. And then um, the idea of ash and charcoal came to my mind. And all these photos were taken in Willamette National Forest, uh, mostly, I mean. <laughs> and then while I was living in Eugene, we had this kind of huge, apocalyptic kind of uh, situation because of that huge wildfire that we had. So um, we returned to some of those locations that I had been taking these photos. And we collected uh, kind of pieces of charcoals from burnt trees. And I ground all these charcoals in, uh, to a very fine kind of um, particles and I, I mix them with a medium only to make them more kind of workable or fluid. And then I added kind of, um, I added that ink, which was nothing but charcoal, uh, on some part of my canvases. And um, what I liked about it, I wanted something physical attached, so something tangible. So when I, if you look at some of these pieces kind of closely, you would even see some, it, uh, some pieces of charcoals on them. Uh, it can be like, it's more visible on some pieces and more kind of invisible because it's somehow um, transparent because I used a very thin layer. But I know that it's there and when I touch it, it makes this kind of, it has this rough texture and it makes this sound, which is, I feel like a tree is right there. I'm like, yeah, like, yeah I love that. my pieces. So, um, another thing I like to, uh, to mention about this piece, in some of my works, I try to imitate nature. Mm -hmm. uh, in this one, I kind of embrace the um, snail, but I kept my distance because I don't feel like we can really touch them or I, I wanted to 
uh, kind of respect them, you know? Yes. Um, not going to, like, not, I'm not going to uh, harm the kind of nature. I, I'm not going to kind of physically kind of touch those kind of uh, sensitive animals. But, yeah. but I'm showing that intimacy and I try to imitate their forms. It's just when we try to know some, someone or something, uh, we try to find a way, or when, when we want to t have a conversation with somebody, imagine that we don't know the language. We might observe at the first stage, look how they behave, how they are like, and then the next stage, if we, know, if we don't know how to communicate through our language, we might start kind of imitating some mm -hmm. part of you know, their mm -hmm. behavior. So, I was trying to imitate nature, to get to know it better, or to start kind of this dialogue with nature. That was the concept. And you can completely feel it. I love, <laughs> I love hearing that explanation. Well, let's turn the corner in the gallery, and um, maybe let's, let's, we don't want to miss some of the pieces, so let's film, film a few of them. And then I'd like to move on to talking about the, some of the smaller works that are brand new in the show that have never been shown before. Mm -hmm. uh, and this series is called Arterials. And um, in just a moment, we'll be, we'll be seeing those. And um, yeah, maybe first it's, it, you know, I. Tell me about these plants and about, uh, you know, your idea for this series, if that's not too general of a question. No. Uh, this is the most recent series of like, my photos. Uh, the, um, the series is showing mostly native plants of Iran. I photographed them while I was in Iran before I had to leave the country. And they are, these are kind of plants and seeds, mostly dry ones, that uh, I collected during very long time while I was in, maybe over 20 years. And I even, I don't know the names of many of them because uh, I was pretty young. We were like, my mom was driving out of like, in the middle of the road, nowhere, you know, and then all of a sudden, me and my sister, we saw some kind of wild plant and I, we said, Mom, please stop. And then we went and unfortunately, you know, <laughs> bring that plant with us and then we collected them. I mean, later I realized that you shouldn't do it. They might be some rare plants there. You shouldn't just simply pick everything and take them with you. So uh, anyway. Um, but you created value with it. Because yeah, I mean, even my uh, my bachelor thesis project was based on all, some of these seeds. This particular um, plant is I made a sculpture very similar to it for my final uh, thesis, and I remember in that time, my professor they they just I'm working with imaginary kind of uh, organic forms, but mm -hmm. I was actually just copying some of these kind of plants with, I mean, with adding some other ideas to mm -hmm. it, but uh, it was not just something imaginary from my mind. These were real, you know, the nature had this, all these kind of strange forms. I haven't done any kind of manipulation to these photos in terms of like creating something totally different. It, it's just a little bit of kind of lighting and adjustments, just in darkness, you know. Um, this sort of kind of editing and uh, I printed them out here uh, for this kind of show and I started to paint on them with uh, a mixture of uh, red ink and I added uh, one drop of my blood for the whole ink to uh, have something more kind of kind of in, in a more symbolic way yes. uh, attached to this plant. And the idea is kind of following the same theme as John with uh, trying to give life to these plants. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's in some of the kind of pieces, it looks more like wounds, but also mm -hmm. uh, wounds is, is 
a part that you have kind of blood on it too and the blood on it sometimes uh, blood is something that heals those wounds. yeah so I keep them all together it's just the plants and the wounds and the uh, healing blood yeah they're beautiful I love there's uh, that you have such a reverence there's something so poetic mysterious um, and you know even though you you use just a drop of your blood I feel like for me I just think of that as like your Naime's put her life into that's these true. plants and she's honoring them yes, um, that's true. and I also love the story of you collecting these pieces throughout your life but then when you travel to the US you had to leave them all behind yes. <laughs> but you documented them because they were so they were like little family members to yeah, you right. that you had to leave and then you know five years or so later you're returning to this project and you're um, bringing those back into your life and, and working on them and I've, I have never seen any work like this and it's like everything you do it's it's unique and it not it not only has a message but they just they're they touch you when you see them which I think is uh, you know the you know your art, artistry um, is just so incredible it's impeccable um, let's be sure and, and some of these other images. I also feel like uh, I'm getting more expressive in some ways. When I started with my like, painting series, it was like I tried to control every small part of my artwork, what I'm going to show, what I'm going to represent. But John's series was for the first time, I felt like I can do something that has much more kind of um, freedom as an artist. I mean, I had this freedom, but I felt like I was trying to control everything uh, without letting my emotion just freely um, be observed, yeah. you know, kind of. But in my photos, I, would, I, I wouldn't have to plan everything earlier. I just had to like make kind of a, a decision at the moment and just just perform something and document that and then show it later and with the arterials it's even more kind of uh, comforting kind of for me so I felt like okay I just have to put my life my blood and then kind of these arterials and it was just very easy for me compared to the torture of like putting patches of paints on my painting that had to be kind of in a perfect realistic kind of way so it's like it's like the the organic material or the environment is sort of meeting you halfway well mm -hmm. whereas with painting you have to create every little thing but with photography it's at, at, you know that aspect of your you're responding to what's there mm -hmm. and you're you're trying to get what you feel about it and and um, it is about that moment capturing that moment and you're seeing what's there and then you're seeing what you need to you know your 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 understanding about composition and life and all that is there mm -hmm. and you're just able to to capture that and then add what's needed but not but no what to leave alone right. so it's like this dance or something yeah i mean i can also put it in words this way too like uh, i can say that in my painting i was trying to be a god <laughs> somebody who decides for everything mm -hmm. but then through like the life experience i became like older and i felt like okay i'm not the god anymore <laughs> and so I, in photos and then in like in John and in mm -hmm. arterials, it's just I try to have more this more conversation mm -hmm. compared to like I was a kind of solo speaker maybe yeah. in, when I was when I used to like paint. But with these series, I feel like oh, it's not much I can do or much I need to do. It's just I can be a small part of it.
You yeah. know, you're bringing attention mm -hmm. um, and honoring. Oh, another thing about uh, art serials is that I feel like it's a kind of connecting point between my earlier painting series and my photos. It has this kind of um, the having kind of uh, red ink and blood from my red outfit in Dreams Before Extinction and Mina and Leopard mm -hmm. uh, found its way to like John series with that with these photos and this is the and then I returned to this kind of um, plans after mm -hmm. five years and mm -hmm. it has a things from both series. Mm -hmm. It has some sort of like concepts from my painting, mm -hmm. which is giving life or healing, and then uh, the red elements of like blood or from the um, um, John series, photo series. And also your, you know, sculpture, because in a way these have a sculptural element too, yeah, because are. you sort of feel them as 3D like here it is, and it's it's not it's sort of not in an environment. It's just isolated, and I don't. And, and some of the large photos too, like the the tree trunks and, and stuff, they feel very sculptural. Um, I feel they are. I mean, there are all monumental. Yes, there are. Yes, in absolutely. Major. Yes, I hope people will get to see these in person because there's nothing there's nothing like seeing these in person, the sense of scale and the texture and everything. Let's let's move around to the back side of the gallery. We probably won't be able to show you absolutely everything, but we'd like to give you a glimpse. <laughs> Some of these pieces feel almost like there's an incubation happening or womb-like um, um, and, and also very, very three-dimensional. They're, they're quite magical. Um, many of these seeds and plants, um, the, when, the reason that I kind of collected some of them were they had this kind of translucent kind of a body that was very attractive uh, to, for me in that time with all these I use arterials but they they also have this kind of texture uh, all on their kind of skin so mm, it was something that was and and most of them have some kind of seeds in them so mm -hmm. I feel like they are kind of similar there are this kind of similarity between them and then this kind of a part of our body so I'm not sure if I can say they have kind of this feminine oh. uh, kind of uh, characteristics in them because it's not just not about like um, sexuality but um, but it also has some sort of it like in them which I don't know how can I how should I explain them well I think what's great is that people can look at them and they can hear you talk about it, but they also can have their own reaction uh, because there is something, you do have a visceral reaction to this, to these pieces and they're, they're engaging and there's, there is some mystery, but it, 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 it'll, it'll evoke different things for different people. I right. would imagine, you know, maybe me as a woman, I feel like that, you yeah. know, because I feel like it has a feeling of protection. Right. Um, and, um, there's pods inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I looked at the kind of the plan and then later I looked at my photo and I and then I printed them out and I felt how I feel about this. And then I decided what to do with it, which part I'm going to apply the ink. For some of them, it's like this piece is it's just a leaf. So and it had all in all these holes kind of from erosion it's not like human impact or nothing like that but i just emphasize on those kind of 
I call them wounds, but it doesn't mean that it has a kind of negative. Yeah, no, it's just a, maybe so, a natural part of life. Yeah, and then I try to give the life back to it, like with kind of showing these wounds and then be the blood around these kind of mm -hmm. holes in the leaves. So whatever, I mean, based on each piece, I was deciding to what I want to participate. Yeah, you know, each one has a really different feeling, and you did, you know, you 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 responded to it, and you honored it in a different way, and it just what you did to them, it feels just right. Uh, it's just just what again what it needed, and um, the balance. Uh, yeah, they're 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 just beautiful. I also get question about the snack. Oh, which yes. might be a good yeah. idea to yeah, explain let's it talk, here. Let's talk about it. <laughs> uh, because everybody asks about, like, yeah. what is this? Is it a kind of signature? It is basically it's something simple, but maybe it's good to, for, like, that we explain yeah. here. Uh, it's just my first name and my last name. My father is a calligrapher, so he wrote my name a long time ago, and I made a stamp with it. And I use it for like my original pieces when I want to like put a signature on it. I use my stamp, which is also a tradition in a kind of Iranian kind of traditional art using mm -hmm. stamp instead of like signing. Mm -hmm. And I dated them with my hand, with hand, with brush layer. So, mm -hmm. but. Um, Oh yeah, you can see the 2023 just tucked in there. Yeah, so it's it's again. I feel like. This is again another part of me in yeah. my works, and it it just is the it becomes a compositional element, and it's just mm -hmm. lovely. Yet it doesn't detract in any way. It's kind well, of well, it was a difficult decision. Should I put it? Yeah, and then I decided to use red to just have this kind of to keep kind of the soul of this red, which represents my me and my body, and then. Uh, divided from the kind of plant itself. Absolutely. Yeah, and when you see these in person, you know, you can really, like, you can see how the paint is kind of shimmery and, you know, really how delicately it's painted, but you can feel it. It has, it almost feels moist, <laughs> um, which is really interesting. Yeah, these are just so, I mean, they, they're really worth getting up close because even within the dark areas, you can see the red going through. Um, yeah, there's a lot of subtlety in these. The painting process, I mean, it's not much painting, but it was really uh, kind of uh, meditating process, mm -hmm. really, for me. So I try to heal, but it also is something like, in, in, what was the word? Uh, kind of um, soothing from mm -hmm. the process as well. So uh, I just feel okay. I can put these lines. And... Yeah, you're you're so in tune with it, so focused, mm -hmm. um, and just really responding and and honoring what's there and not overdoing it. You know, as you know, having done art and seen a lot of art, it's so. You could have gone wild with these, you know, but it was like you, you know, knowing what to do and not what not to do, mm -hmm. and letting letting the plant form speak for itself, but you're also interacting with it. Yeah, they were perfect when, uh, if even if I just represent just uh, plant by itself, it, it had nothing, um, you know, it was just perfect by itself. It was. Attractive. It had all these kind of forms and everything in it. Mm -hmm. But so I had to be very careful what I'm going to add to this, to not to like disturb it, you know. In a, so how can I be part of it? It's just uh, I want to emphasize on this part that I want to be part of it. I don't want to change something in it, or because it's perfect. How can I find a way to just have kind of little interaction with that plant mm -hmm. or with that with every kind of with that landscape mm -hmm. you know first of all i just want to thank you so much for being here and finally i'm having the chance to exhibit naime in my gallery 
Um, this show is up through June 24th. So um, if you're watching this video right away, you still have time. Um, and um, uh, we are, the gallery hours are Wednesday through Saturday. And if you, if you are here in town on a day that the gallery is not open, please call us. We also do appointments. Um, this is really not a show to be missed. If you've seen Naime's past shows, I think you'll see what's similar, but also what's different. And she's a really interesting and important artist to know about. Uh, I'm so grateful you returned to Eugene. She's in Chicago now, but we were so grateful that she um, spent the time oh, in Oregon. So much. I love Oregon, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so she will always come <laughs> back <obvious>. here. <laughs> so we are thrilled, thrilled to uh, have your work and thank you for being here today to explain thank your you wonderful so pieces. Oh, thank you so much for the opportunity. And thank you all.